My name is Kelsey Lemon. I'm a technical marketing manager for the global services team here at VMware, and my primary focus is Skyline. And for today's demonstration, I'm going to show the Skyline Advisor Service in action and highlight some really cool features that I'm sure you're going to find very valuable. And so without further ado, let's jump right into the service so that you can see it in action. So as you know, Skyline is a free service that's available for our production and our premier subscription customers. And when you log into the advisor service, you're initially greeted with this dashboard. Um, you can think of it as mission control, where as an IT manager or an admin, you get everything that you expect to see at your fingertips. You know, going from left to right, you're going to see your account type, your ID, as well as a contract number for your organization. And in this particular case, our organization is called Skyline Hands-On Lab. Then there's insight into the environment that Skyline is proactively monitoring. And this is where things get really interesting because it reflects what Skyline has been made aware of during the configuration of our collectors. Um, in this case, you know, Skyline is monitoring an environment that consists of two vCenters, nine hosts, 24 virtual machines, one vRealize Operation Manager, two Horizon Connection Servers, and four NSXV objects. You know, as a IT manager or an admin, I particularly like the environment summary because I can see what the collectors are monitoring. And when it's an exact match to what I know about my environment, it actually increases my confidence in the proactive findings and recommendations that Skyline provides. So how is this environment being monitored, right? Again, you know, I talked about the collectors. And so in this particular organization, I have three collectors that are doing the work. Um, and if I were to expand the collectors, you'd see the architecture of my environment. You'd see how those components that I mentioned earlier are allocated across them. You know, these collectors have been given user friendly names to help me easily identify where my collectors are deployed or how I intend on using them. Which actually leads me to another point around best practices for deploying Skyline collectors. You know, from an architecture point of view, deployment can be as simple or as complex as you want it to be. Um, you can have one collector for your entire organization or you can have several. Um, the flexibility is entirely yours. You know, the only recommendation that VMware makes from an architecture point of view is that if your environment has vCenter servers in multiple geographies, you should place a collector in the same region where that vCenter server resides. Okay, so now let me go back to the dashboard to talk about the overview of my findings and recommendations. Um, they are broken down by level of severity and category. And as I hover over each severity level, I get a tooltip. Um, critical findings show causes for data corruption. Moderate findings impact usability. And trivial findings are recommended best practices. You know, obviously being able to identify issues by level of severity is a benefit that speaks for itself. But I also like how advisor gives me the ability to see issues by category as well. And as you can see here, the 106 issues being reported by Skyline fall under networking, security, compute, storage, end user compute, and operation management categories. And what I like about the ability to see issues grouped by category is that it allows me to focus on the issues that matter most to me. Uh, for example, um, if I know that my environment has a history of issues around storage, I can prioritize my proactive next steps based on the findings in advisor. And if you're wondering, the answer is yes. Uh, these issues can be filtered um, by severity, category, as well as the date when that issue was first observed, giving me the ability to query and isolate the findings that are most important to me. Okay, so now moving over to Log Assist, you know, this feature does exactly what the name implies. It helps you create log bundles and attaches them to support requests that our support team helps you resolve. I'm going to go into this feature in a bit more detail later in the demo. And just below Log Assist is updates. You know, since Skyline Advisor is a cloud-based service, there's only one release, meaning that you don't have to go through the hassle of staying up to date on the latest version. 
So every time there's an update, like the addition of new features that happened just recently, you'll see that information in the release notes, as well as information on any bug fixes that have also been resolved. The documentation links show relevant information for installing and configuring the collector, as well as how to get started with the advisor service. And if you haven't already done so, I highly recommend checking these documents out because the service is constantly expanding on its capabilities. And like everything else, you know, Skyline has a social media presence. And if you're like me, you like to hear directly from those top subject matter experts and get their insights. Um, Skyline's blog and Twitter page is a great way to connect with those top guns like the experts who are supporting us in today's Q&A session. Finally, the dashboard allows you to see any open support requests. You know, it's worth noting here that you can only see support requests that you've opened. The development team is working on increasing the visibility of support requests across the entire organization. You know, customers just like you have provided this feedback. And if you want to go on record to voice your approval of this update, um, vote for another feature or even highlight a bug that you've encountered, you can go to the feedback option to rate the service and provide additional comments. OK, so now for the meat of the demo, findings and recommendations. You know, these are environment specific issues that could potentially disrupt day to day business and give you a lot of headache if you don't take action to address them. It's important to note that I said environment specific um, and quite frankly, you know, this is the value of Skyline, meaning that these findings aren't some generic rule of thumb or tip of the day recommendation that you as an IT professional already know about. These findings are relevant to this specific environment and can play a key role in determining you know, or informing the next steps in your risk management plan. And those next steps, again, they can be as simple as prioritizing those findings by using Skyline's filter tool. You know, with it, you can attack potential issues in your environment based on severity, category, finding, or any combination of those different filter types, allowing you to focus on what's relevant to you. So when I look at the first finding here, you know, I can see that it's presented in an easy to read card format. And when I click on it, I'm going to see a couple of things. I'm going to see a unique finding ID that can be used um, in discussions either internally or with our VMware Global Support Services team. I'm going to see the level of severity. I'm going to see a description of the potential issue discovered within this environment, as well as an indication of the risk to this environment if that recommended action is not completed. I'm also going to see a list of the objects that could be impacted by this issue. And most importantly, I'm going to get a recommendation on how to resolve the issue, including hyperlinks to VMware knowledge base articles, um, security advisories, or other official VMware documentation. You know, this specific finding indicates that, you know, from a configuration point of view, that if I enable backup of my NSX components, this specific NSX manager has not been configured, which can be extremely problematic if it were to become corrupt or go offline or even accidentally delete it. You know, and based on this finding, you know, if I were to configure backup for this manager, you know, obviously this finding would be removed from future reports, dropping the number of total findings from 106 to 105. I can also use keyword searches to zero in on specific findings. Now, here's one that I like to show. It's an HTML related finding. And when I click on it, I can see that it's a critical level finding that could potentially cause data inconsistency. You know, many customers aren't aware that removing a virtual machine folder from inventory will also delete virtual machines that are not powered on when using vSphere's HTML5 client. Um, this issue was resolved in vCenter 6.7, but as you can see, I'm currently running 6.5, and at the moment, I can't upgrade to 6.7. But I'm happy to say there's a workaround, as indicated by the attached knowledge space article, which recommends using a Flash-based Flex client. Now, here's another scenario that I like to show. As you can see, this environment has 106 issues, but not all of them are particularly relevant to me. 
you know, for example, you know, as an IT admin, I know that this environment is not running Microsoft clustering services. But despite that, I'm getting findings related to the service. And this is because Skyline doesn't know the applications that I'm running in my environment. So it has the responsibility, if you will, to flag it as a potential issue. And so, you know, in that sense, you know, Skyline is truly acting as an advisor. It's not going to do the job for me. And quite frankly, I don't want it to. Because again, I'm the one with the most knowledge about the environment that I'm managing here. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do a keyword search for Microsoft clustering services. And I'm going to see right here that I have two findings related to the service. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to click on select all. Then I'm going to click mute findings. Then I'm going to click OK. And when I remove the keyword filter, I can see that the number of findings has been reduced from 106 to 104. I haven't deleted them because I can still see them under my muted findings option. And I can always unmute them in the future should I decide to implement Microsoft clustering services. I should also point out that after I've customized my list of findings that are relevant to me, I can export them for additional review or I can even send them to other members of my team who may be the ones responsible for implementing the recommendations from Skyline Advisor. Um, this really cool feature is available for all of our Skyline customers and the export is a CSV file that um, can actually be leveraged um, by other tools like command line interface tools like PowerShell or PowerCLI to automate the remediation of these findings. Now moving over to upgrade recommendations. You know, upgrade recommendations are available under findings and recommendations. Clicking on upgrade recommendations displays all of the potential upgrades that are possible for this environment. And they're sorted by vCenter server. And if there are multiple upgrade recommendations, they are displayed in the order of upgrade sequence. And so in this example, I have three ESXi hosts um, that are being managed by this particular vCenter server. And there's three upgrade recommendations, including the minimum build number for each version. And so in this case, if I were to upgrade to minimum build number uh, 6.0 U3, I would resolve 48 potential issues discovered by Skyline within this particular environment. But if I were to decide to upgrade to a higher version than what is recommended, then the automatic product interoperability check will be invalidated. Um, and speaking of interop, you know, you may be asking yourself if performing the recommended upgrade will break um, connections to other VMware solutions that you're running. And I'm happy to say that Skyline automatically detects issues that would impact any of its recommended upgrades you know and clicking on show details next to the upgrade recommendation will actually show additional information which includes interoperability issues that will need to be addressed before the recommended upgrade can be done Okay, so now I'm going to move over to operational summary reports or OSRs, you know, and I should also note that um, OSRs are only available to our premier support customers. OSRs contain advanced findings and recommendations and come in two types of reports. Um, the standard report is automatically generated every two weeks, and it's basically a snapshot of all the proactive findings um, that Skyline provides. And it also comes in two downloadable versions. Um, there's a Word document that gives a listing of the findings. And then there's a zip file that includes that Word document and a CSV file that identifies all of the affected objects. And right under that are the custom reports. And they are created at your request by a support account manager that gets assigned to you as part of your premier support subscription benefit. So for example, if you want to see all of the CPU vulnerability issues flagged by Skyline, your support account manager can generate it for you and it's going to appear right here. And what I like about OSRs is that they are ideal for communicating up or having those C-level briefings um, where I can go into a, uh, more detail about the health of the environment that I'm managing. And I can even share my insights and my recommendations on how I'm either going to improve or maintain that health.
And so with that, what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to just pause right here because I'm going to shift the conversation a bit. You know, up until this point, I've been talking about Skyline's proactive and self-service capabilities to keep the environments that you manage out of harm's way. But there may be times when you'll need to react to an issue that is disrupting the environments that you're managing. And our support team is here to help. And Skyline is that connective tissue to our support team. It can actually help facilitate your interaction with the team and even speed up that time to resolution. And this is where the log assist feature comes into play. So after you've submitted a support request, Skyline's log assist feature can actually streamline the process of manually gathering and uploading those log bundles that our TSCs are going to need to help troubleshoot your issue. So let me expand my inventory so I can attach a log bundle from one of my impacted objects. And since the SR has already been open, I can select it and attach the log bundle and initiate a log transfer. And at that point, I'm done. In less than two minutes, I've created a log bundle and I've set it to support. You know, you heard us mention that customers are reporting 30% um, time savings when creating log bundles, and this is how they're doing it. And with that, I can get back to more meaningful work now. And if I want to save myself even more time, I can even let VMware's TSEs create the log bundle for me with this log transfer request feature. And with it, I have the option to approve or to deny the request. And there's even an option to auto approve requests from our TSEs as well. And to keep tabs on the status of your SRs as well as the associated log bundle transfers, you can see those in the log library. Here you can see who initiated the transfer, whether it was by you or by someone within VMware, and you can even see when it was done. Okay, so before I end my demo, I want to show another really cool feature within the Skyline service. You know, Advisor supports the ability to customize your email notifications. Um, you can modify those settings to alert you when new critical findings become available, you know, when collector passwords are about to expire. Uh, when new features obviously become available and if you are a premier support customer you can see when those osrs are available as well you know this is a really great feature if you're a member of multiple organizations that are leveraging skyline to monitor those environments you can control the amount of traffic that comes to your inbox and prioritize the communications that are most important to you and with that this concludes my presentation of skyline if you're already using it I hope you like the latest updates. And if you're considering taking advantage of this free service that comes as an additional benefit to your support subscription, I highly recommend that you start using the service today.